Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Randy from Dino Camps. Um, we get questions all the time on how to hook up the throttle linkage, how to vent the tank, several different questions regarding the Predator or our Ducar 212. So today I thought we'd put together a little video and show you how to do that. Um, first of all, I'm going to be using our Ducar 212 today as our example engine. I've got a few parts here. I've got a couple of different throttle linkage options. I've also got our chain guard that fits the 212 or the Predator. And the tools we're going to be needing today, I've got a 10 millimeter wrench, I've got a 3 16 Allen wrench, a Phillips head screwdriver, a pair of needle nose pliers, a drill with a 1 8 inch drill bit, an 8 millimeter and a 10 millimeter socket. Also got some electrical tape and some zip ties. I'll show you later what that's for. So the first thing we're going to do when we get this 212 is I'm going to remove the air box. I'm going to need a 10 millimeter. Got two nuts here on the back of the air box. Very simple. You want to shut the gas off and you want to turn the engine to choke so that this box will just slide right off. Got a couple of hoses here. You can just leave that hooked up. That's not in our way. So the next thing, first thing we want to start on is the throttle arm is always going to come locked down because these engines are designed for service use. So that's designed to run full throttle or slow. So I'm going to take my 10 millimeter wrench. I'm going to loosen this lock nut right here on top. You just want to start backing it off until this arm moves freely because we're going to hook our throttle linkage right to this arm so this has got to move free or of course our throttle will stick so as you can see we've got it moving freely now the spring returns it that's what we want next thing i'm going to do is get my throttle linkage out i've got two options we have the one that comes from socks um, comes complete as a kit it's got the throttle rod it's got your uh, part here to hook your clevis and your cable through. We've also got one that we use from WMS products. Either one of these work just fine. Um, for the 212, we found that the WMS seems to work a little bit better simply because it's offset. I'll show you when we get to it what I'm talking about. And the SOX kit seems to be the kit of choice for the Predator. So either way, it's totally up to you which one you use. They both will work. So the first thing we're going to do, get our 8 millimeter socket, remove the top two bolts from your recoil. Now, if I was going to use this socks kit, I do not have screws long enough to fit through this recoil. The stock screw is too short and it will not catch. So if you choose to use that kit, you're gonna need two longer screws. Our part number is CL1370, should you need that. You can see the difference in the length. Now, if I was gonna use the socks kit, that's what I'd do. I'm going to go with this WMS kit and it comes with the hardware and it does come with the longer screws. That's a little more convenient for you, something you don't have to buy after you've already bought the part. So the first thing we want to do is take the supplied throttle rod and if you can see this throttle stop right here, it's got a hole in it. See the hole? We want to slide our throttle rod through that hole and then we want to put the kit up next to our recoil start both screws before I tighten either one down. Pull them up evenly. Snug those up. Now, 
take your Phillips screwdriver, 10 millimeter wrench, and I like to turn this straight back. You got a hole on each side. This hole is for your throttle rod. This hole is used for your clevis on your throttle kit. So I like to turn it straight back. Take your Phillips screwdriver, go down in this throttle stop we've seen before, and snug that screw up. Now take the arm, make sure everything's working. We don't have any bind, no problems. Everything seems to be fine. So we're gonna take a 10 millimeter wrench, hold that nut, and then lock this screw in place. Got it? That's it. Throttle's working. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and put my air box, if I can figure out what I did with it, put my air box back in place. It goes back on the same way we took it off. You will have to hook your hose back into your valve cover. It slides right in. It's not a big deal. Replace these two nuts. to the 10 millimeter socket, snug these up. Remember you're dealing with plastic on the air filter uh, and you're dealing with plastic on the insulator in front of the car. So don't over tighten that. That's a good thing to note. Now this throttle kit comes complete with my L bracket. It also comes with the brass fitting for the cable should you need it. And it comes with the clevis that would go here as well as a carter pin to go through it. So that's if you're a new cart, new cable, whatever, and you need all the parts, it does come with it. What most carters, including myself, do, we switch out from a clone to a Predator. I use my existing cable and L bracket that's already on the cable, bolt it right up, put my clevis right to this. That way the same throttle leakage that works on my clone works on my Predator. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is install our chain guard. When you purchase a chain guard, it's important to note that it doesn't come with bolts. So if you don't have access to bolts yourself, you need to order yourself a couple of bolts for the chain guard. We sell them both in button head or hex. Most people prefer the button head so that your chain doesn't drag on the bolt head. This is pretty self-explanatory. You use your top two bolts in the crankcase cover. And just as we did on the throttle kit, we want to start both bolts before we tighten anything down. I like to pick up on the back end of the chain guard. That way it gives me more clearance between the chain guard and the muffler. The farther away from the muffler I can get the chain guard, the less likely I am to get my arm burned. Especially us larger guys, we don't have much choice but lay up against the motor. So we need to get this chain guard as far away from the muffler as possible. Both of those bolts down tight. Now we're done with our chain guard. Next thing you're going to want to do is vent the cap. Now these things come equipped with a plastic fuel cap and for service use they're vented just fine you never have an issue but when we're racing we turn this thing about 5,000 rpms which is a good bit more than the factory designed it to run so therefore you get what's called a vapor lock effect your tank can't vent itself so therefore it has a lull or a it'll, it'll literally shut off in the turn if you don't vent it we use this eighth inch drill bit that we talked about and we're gonna drill four holes. Now if you'll see on our engine, you got a little, little gas pump sign. I like to drill right around that little pump sign. I'm not telling you that's the only method. That's just one that we've used. We've tested, it works fine. So this is what we generally recommend to folks. Be careful when you do this. <laughs> It's important also that you drill completely through the cap and the white insert. All right, when all four of 
for our drill, you're going to need to get some compressed air and blow this out very well because we've got plastic inside the cap, in between the cap and the insert. You got to get all that out. If you don't, it goes directly into your fuel. Then it can get into your carb and cause you all kinds of issues. So it's very important that you blow this cap off. If you need, you can unhook this little um, cap and take the, take the cap away from the chain if you need to get it away from your gas cap or gas tank. Now, next thing we need to do, this is something that most people miss, and we made a video a few years back and we even missed it ourselves. It is a must that we vent this tank through the vent tube. To do that, you just simply pull the clamp back and work this hose. Off of that nipple. Now, a lot of places are starting to go to a tech rule that it must be vented at the tank and not at the air filter. If you can see right here, you could unhook this same hose from the air box. A lot of places are throwing you out for that, so just know that, that if you've unhooked it here, they're considering that a cheat because you're sucking air through the box, not allowing that. So always unhook it from the tank up at the top. And again, this is something people miss. They feel like because they got their cap bended, everything's good. But what happens is this engine sits on the right. Well, we oval carters turn left. When we turn left, we slosh all our fuel to the right side to this vent. That allows the tank not to be able to breathe. So you got to pull this vent hose off so that that can vent. I don't like to leave it flopping around. I think it, you know, looks kind of unprofessional. So I always take just a simple zip tie and zip tie the hose up to the top of the nipple and then cut it off it's out of the way nobody pays it any attention it looks a whole lot better now we've got our cap vented we've got our tank vented we have a working throttle linkage kit the last thing we got our chain guard installed the last thing that needs to be done is your low oil shut off sensor this can be unplugged per tech rules. This is another area where guys don't go by the rules and they end up getting themselves thrown out for something that didn't help them in any way. You cannot cut these wires. You can't just simply cut them off. Even though the low oil sensor is no longer functioning and that doesn't make any difference as far as power, the tech rules say that they could be unplugged and taped up. They cannot be cut off, so keep that in mind. You just want to unplug them. You do not want to cut them and, and disable them entirely. Now, we got several wires here and it can be a little overwhelming. Don't worry about that. What we want to do is unhook this and this. Why? Because these two and this wire come out of the oil sensor. Okay. The only wire that should still be hooked up is the one coming from the kill switch that goes to the ignition. This is your kill switch. This is your ignition kill switch wire. And this is a ground. So you got to be grounded. You got to have your kill switch. Everything coming from the oil sensor, wire number one, wire number two, wire number three, unhooked. Got that? Then, I've never seen this make a difference whether or not we tape it up or don't, but it's not a bad idea to go ahead and tape the ends of these wires just in case so they shouldn't ground out against one another. But again, I don't know that that really makes any difference. I just tie strap them together and hadn't had a problem. But for safety's sake, we're gonna tape them up just so they can't touch each other. And once you get these three taped together, I take another zip tie zip tie the three of them up together this is just again just for looks cosmetics just want to get all that stuff out of the way it doesn't look very professional for that to be dangling so then I pack everything back in the original casing that it was in when it was new There you go. Now you might figure a better way to do that, but just keep in mind, don't cut the wires. You can unplug them and take them, zip tie them, whatever, but you cannot 
cup. And that's about it. Keep in mind the thing doesn't come with any oil, it doesn't come with any gas, so that's up to you. We have already taken the liberty on our Ducar 212 to set the spring all the way to the right, which increases RPMs. So most of the time, you're gonna get one of these things out of the box. It's gonna run around 55 to 5600 RPMs right out of the box. You'll need to check that. Don't just assume that it's going to beat that 5500 RPM rule. If you take a look, if you can get the camera up under this air box, if you can see this screw right here, can you see that? It's called a throttle stop. You want to screw that in to lower the RPM. You want to screw it out to raise the RPM. Keep in mind, most tracks have a 5,500 RPM max, so you will need to set that. Thank you. Have a great day.